Alright guys, welcome back. It's PGA Tour 2K23. We're we'll playing the Genesis Invitational at Riviera Country Club. Uh, it's 72 holes. So, our new rival is Justin Thomas, JT. Uh, we'll get his hat, a fitting, and money. Um, if we play okay, we'll finish off the Cobra sponsorship. Uh, and then we can go into something else. Hopefully, play. if we play decent, I might make it all into one video. Um, if we don't play very well or very good, uh, I'll split it because I'll probably stop playing. <laughs> 2K Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, is proud to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. We're at the Genesis Invitational. Today's coverage is just about to begin. I'm Luke Elvey alongside Rich Beam in the booth and it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm very happy to be following this particular featured group because there are rumours of quite the rivalry starting to bubble between these two players. So it looks like they aim to beat Justin Thomas. Should add a bit of extra excitement to our coverage today, Henny. Oh, that goes without saying, Luke, but Justin Thomas will not be easy to beat. I don't think there's a more competitive man out there on tour. No, you're absolutely right there. He's a complete uh, player. It'll certainly be I interesting thought that to would keep take an eye off on a lot, but throughout the event. Looks to be going with a hybrid here. Oh, dear. Can he get out of here? Yeah, this is not what they wanted. There might be a couple of hits here. Butting for birdie. Just didn't hit it. Yeah, that looked to be a bit of a misread. Well, I think they fell in love with the line, forgot about the pace. He finds himself currently tied for nine. Justin Thomas birdies it. We know that Riviera starts with a 5-4, but it may as well be hole. a 4-5 because the par 4 second is tougher than the par 5 first. I've never seen a golf course where you're so happy to start off birdie bogey. It's <laughs> the strangest thing I've ever seen. The second hole, pretty straight away off the tee shot. The second I can shot see why it's a hard. Bit from left to right back up the hill. There is some space on the right-hand side to miss your second shot up by the green, but there's no guarantees that it'll kick hard enough right to left to get back on the green. It's a sensational second hole. The uh, the green is what makes it hard, but <laughs> even though That's our second shot was Great chip. absolute ass, hands. the chip was good. And this effort by Justin Thomas. He's currently in fifth place. Standing over very this one, away. and it's a very long part. This for back to back. The two of us, we wouldn't be able to keep it on the green, but so after I'm not going to sit and watch. This is what the leaderboard <laughs> that thing like. was taking three minutes to get to the hole. <laughs> what the hell was that? He bogeyed it. Pacific Palisades in California, the site of Riviera, the third hole, par four, elevated nah. tee shot. And a fairly generous fairway, a little bit more room out to the left than what Bounce. players can Bounce. see off the tee shot. Second shot is going to be downhill to a green that basically chases away from the player, going from the front portion of it all the way to the back. Difficult to get your second shot close here. Justin Thomas, major champion, world number one player, really has all the attributes, doesn't he, Rich? He does. His focus on the, his own game is is amazing I, I think that this kid really understands how to play the game he's got all the shots but he doesn't try and get up there and hit it as hard as he can every single time he gets out there and he learns how to play the game hit the finesse shots when you need it take some risks when you have when you need to but also back off when you don't need to this kid is a real deal complete game from head to toe so many wonderful holes at the George Thomas Design Riviera Country Club. This par three fourth has to be one of them. This is a spectacular par three. Ideally, players want to hit a tee shot that moves significantly from right to left and moving with the contour of the green. If they can do that, then they've got an opportunity to hit it really close. If they challenge the pin off the tee shot, well, it could come up short in that bunker, and that is a massive no-no. 
Yeah, we hit ours too fast. If it wasn't fast, it would have been good. Let's catch up Just, with the okay. proceedings. This would be a great up and down. Yeah, oh, just like in time. That shot there, Beamer. He is Love very good. This player around the greens. From yeah, what I nice watch him of him, him, his biggest thing is I th I just honestly think it's just inconsistency. He'll play really, really well. The PGA Tour is basically but a then the next day, days, the you know, it at Riviera, forces players something to be desired for him. Hold off off the tee. The fairway does run out about 310 yards off the tee, and players not necessarily going to hit driver here. They have to be mindful that the fairway pitches significantly from right to left on their tee shot. From there, they're hitting their second shots downhill again to a green that chases away from them front to back. Again, a simple-looking second shot, but a difficult one to get yeah, close. Revere is tough. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. Oh, look at this. Right down the throat. Great shot. Wish I would have done that. Getting ready to play their third. He's two shots back. Just six feet between here and the hole. And there it is. This player is putting for fun. Lydia Ko is currently on top spot as we pause for a look at the leader. Lydia Ko, four under. The sixth hole at Riviera is one of the most famous par on the and West Coast, Rich. An absolute beauty. It looks like a giant green donut with the bunker right in the center of the green, doesn't it? I love this hole. Well, why wouldn't we be in it? It's going right. Setting up in the bunker here. Well, I'm pretty sure he'll be happy to be back on the green. Oh, and gets the putt to drop. What a great display of resilience on this hole. In the bunker with their tee shot, and that is a very good save. It must be the biggest pain in the ass. And it's to get all the sand Co, who leads here as we head from to the off next. the green with these tournaments. Let's head to the par 4 7th at the Riv again. It's a par 4 that requires placement of the tee. The fairway bunker down the left-hand side comes in quicker Thank you. than you can imagine. Thank you, Trey. And so players want to try and hit it out towards the far right part of it. But again, you push it a little bit, and now the Barranca comes into play. If you find the fairway, happy days. This green is probably one of the most severe tilted from back to front. Players need to make sure their second shots land past this hole in order for it to come back down towards the hole. You will have a downhill putt, <laughs> but it's better than coming up short. What is this? Get your head out the way. There we go. He made it. <laughs> and as they stand over this putt, it's for a sheer third spot. Uh, yeah. Okay, steady now. I knew I hit it too hard. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? The perfect leave. Uphill yeah. can be firm. Longer than our first one, the yeah, perfect leave. Over that one. We'll hold. <sighs> Come on, man. I put it to like eight foot and couldn't make and the damn putt. Lydia Co on top of the leaderboard. The par 4 right at Riviera is a choose-your-own-adventure. Which fairway do you like to take? I think most players are going to try and go down the left-hand side as it seems to be the easier of the two these days. However, where they stick that flagstick, well, that's a different question. If they stick it up front right, the left-hand side of the fairway, that's not the easiest approach. So better be mindful of where that flagstick is in order to pick which side of the fairway you want to drive it down. Come on. Come on off the green. There you go. And here we are with the third shot. Four strokes off the lead. Certainly makes putting easy if you can chip it that close. Yes. Very smooth tempo there on that chip. Now four back after that hole. 
The final hole on the outward half is a par four playing back up towards the clubhouse, Rich. It's a good par four. Only the big hitters are going to be able to carry that fairway bunker down the left-hand side. Right. Most players are going to try and avoid it and even miss it, the fairway out to the right-hand side, which is not a bad miss. From there, the second shot is directly uphill. Deep, deep bunkers on the front right part of this. That is not the place to miss it. Anything that's a little bit long will leave you a downhill putt, but that's the safe play. <laughs> I don't know how it was that slow, fellas. I really don't. Up and down here. Sure. Playing their fifth shot. Four shots behind our leader. On the green now, but a bit of work left to do here. And just about eight feet left to the hole. Sure. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's currently one stroke better than his rival and playing partner today. Playing their fourth shot. And now we can take a look at how that wonderful play affects the leaderboard. Nine holes down into this rivalry, Rich. How are you rating their performance so far? So Awful. far, Luke, this player is trailing their rival but let's face it, it's only nine holes into the tournament. There's a lot of time between now and the end, but there is ground to make up. Second shot here on the 10th hole. <laughs> this would be a great up and down. Oh, I thought that one was Just go back in. off. Thank you. Thank Sitting you for that. Jesus over. Christ. Oh, just missed. Putting for bogey here. That will work. <laughs> that was hilarious. It was awesome. And it's Lydia Cohen top spot. The chip with almost max spin. The power five eleventh, one of the better runs off the green. The course, Next chip when they stand on this barely gets on the green. Just a runs off the green on the other side. Runway, if you like, awesome. Both sides of this fairway flanked by huge eucalyptus trees, which frames this tee shot brilliantly. You find the fairway, second shot once again straightforward. You must avoid that bunker front right at all cost. That is deep and nasty. You're not going to enjoy it. being in there. Henny, I'm sure you've got a better look of that lie. Well, it's a little deeper into the rough, but it's sitting nicely. That a boy. Good shot. And this effort by Justin Thomas. He's currently ahead in this rivalry. Let's see what happens. And back to the course with the live action. Steps up to a punt of about 15 feet in distance. Can you hear those tweets? This is what they have left for birdie here. Uh, looked good for a while, but unable to drop just inches away. Trailing by seven after that hole. When you stand on the 12th tee, Rich, you're thinking to yourself, oh, a couple of strong back-to-back -back par fours and it starts right here. This is where the golf course gets extremely difficult, Luke. This tee shot moves from left to right, but massive overhanging eucalyptus trees down the right-hand side prevents you from hitting a high draw over them. Once you're in the fairway, though, your second shot is to a green that's really not as big as it should be for such a long hole. And there's a famous tree just short and left of this green, Bogey's tree. Not because of the score, because Humphrey Bogart used to sit there and just watch everybody butcher this hole. Now seven shots behind after that. Rich the 13th hole, slightly different look off the tee. It's really cool. This tee shot is framed by large eucalyptus trees, both right and left, requires a draw. Nothing else to do. You have to move this golf ball from right to left off this tee. If you do it correctly, well, that golf ball could chase down there miles down this fairway. If you find the fairway down there, you're going to love the second shot. The difficulty gets when the pin is all the way back left in this little peninsula. You miss it a little bit left there, you're going to find the barranca, and you're probably going to find a bogey or worse. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. He's currently in fourth place. Hmm. Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Lydia Ko is currently on top of this one. The 14th, Rich, I know it's dear to your heart, the par three. You made an ace there in tournament history, won a car. 
How do you tell the players to play it? Hit a seven iron, uh, a high little draw seven iron, and two hop it right in the hole, Luke. That's what I suggest. That makes it easy. This would be a momentum saver here, getting this up and down. Very crafty, that shot. Great touch. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's sitting there in the rankings at fourth. So with another hole behind us, let's take a look at the leaderboard. And it's Lydia Ko on top of the leaderboard. The 15th rich, uh, a very good par four. Although if you're Victor Hovland, maybe the fairway's not in your line of sight. It's a great par four, and yet there's some players that have seen it a little bit differently lately. I always saw it as a dog leg from left to right, just avoid that fairway bunker down the right-hand side. And this is an interesting green. It's got a high spot on the left, and it's got a low middle section and a high section on the right-hand side, and you never have a flat putt. It is always breaking one direction or another, and it's either straight uphill or straight downhill. This is the most difficult green on the golf course by a long margin. If you see it differently, you can hit it down the right, down 17 fairway, but I fail to see how that's any kind of advantage. What are we looking at for this putt, Henny? I've been all around this, tried to read it, just can't see it, but he's got about 22 feet. Short game has been especially sharp today, Luke. Very impressive. He's got a par putt here. Let's see if he can make it. And it's New Zealand's Lydia Ko who leads here as we head to the next. Chosen the pitching wedge here. Wonderfully played. All the great players make a bunch of these. This is from 15 feet. That was a gallant attempt. Pretty good chance here. This one's for par. Now eight shots back after that hole. The last genuine scoring hole at Riviera is certainly this par 5 17th. Any hopes of getting it home in two, you better come up with something special off the tee and make sure to avoid the bunker on the right-hand side. Is this player going to get their first win of the season, Rich? They've had a couple of runner-up finishes, so yes, they're finally getting the mix on a consistent basis. It just seems like it's only a matter of time. Well, doesn't take a genius to know that this is not a good place to be. That dog will hunt. Just nine feet remaining to the hole. Like the look of this one. Oh, lovely roll. Putting for a par here. Lydia Ko is currently on top of things as it stands. One of the most famous finishing holes on the PGA Tour, Rich. This 18th at Riviera is a classic. Aim for the palm trees in the distance, which are located just on the left-hand side of the green. A good tee shot there will set up an awesome looking second. And this player seems to not be too intimidated having Justin Thomas in their group today. That was a fantastic shot into this green. And with that, this round comes to a close. So the opening round in the books, Rich. Impressed with your efforts here in the booth. Thanks for your time. It's goodbye for now. Looking forward to the next three rounds. Well, another great day of action here at 2K Sports. On behalf of Rich Beam, the entire hardworking folks and team here, I'm Luke Elvey. We look forward to your company next time. I think it's funny how your rivals go from not being able to, except for one, even make the, or except for a couple, even make the cut to even second place. And the now. PGA Tour proud to bring you the season long race for the FedEx Cup. Here we are at the Genesis Invitational, one of the top events each year on the schedule. Today's coverage is about to start. Pleased you could join us for this second round action. I'm Luke Elvey with Rich Beam here as we keep an eye on this player who's been trailing in the tournament but has a real opportunity today.
They do. They need to get out there, though, and start firing at some flags. They've been playing very conservative all week long, and you can't continue to do that with any hopes of winning. You have to go ahead and start trying to take advantage of the conditions. Hit it close a few more times. And until they start doing that, I don't see them uh, catching the leaders. Big day coming up. Can't wait to see how it unfolds, Rich. This should be an absolute beauty. You've been here a long time, haven't you, today? You have way too much energy for me. Caffeine's just kicking in now. Oh, boy. And it's Lydia Ko on top of the leaderboard. Time to step on your tee shot here at this long par four. I've never seen a golf course where you're so happy to start off birdie bogey. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. The second hole, pretty straight away off the tee shot. The second shot moves a little bit from left to right back up the hill. There is some space on the right-hand side to miss your second shot up by the green, but there's no guarantees that it'll kick hard enough right to left to get back on the green. It's a sensational second hole. And back to the play, shall we? Henny, what does that lie look like? Guys, you know the worst lie you've ever seen? Yeah, time's up by 10. This is nasty. Unable to find the green on this one. Oh, a little shorty Baker on that action there. Time now for the fourth shot. Time for the fifth shot. Oh, these are good for the momentum, these ones. Right on eight feet. Good putt, that. Sitting at a couple over for the event. Unfortunately, backing up slowly but surely on that leaderboard, Luke. And a par four awaits at this next hole. Tee shot is looking good here. Time for the second shot into the third. All right, we're going with an extra club here. Oh, terrific approach and a chance for birdie here at the third. Good looking putt. Super shot that. And it's New Zealand's Lydia Ko who leads here as we head to the next. Going with the six iron here. Second shot here on the fourth. And he needs this to save par. Not sure if that one came out of the center of the putter. Can't believe he did that. That drives you bonkers as a player. We have a par four on this one. The fairway does run out about 310 yards off the tee and players not necessarily gonna hit driver here. They have to be mindful that the fairway pitches significantly from right to left on their tee shot. From there, they're hitting their second shots downhill again to a green that chases away from them front to back. Again, a simple looking second shot, but a difficult one to get close. And here we are with their four. Let's get back to it, shall we? What's in front of them, Henny, with this part? straight back up this hill can be fun here wow that's misjudged an opportunity to make a par here trailing by seven after that hole let's see what happens here on the sixth what an incredible design this is and it really just takes this green and it makes it into a section of four the back right, the front right, front left, and back left, they all have their unique features to it, and that all is due to the simple fact that that bunker, which is tiny, minuscule, almost not even there, it basically shapes that green into the four quadrants. It is just an amazing design. This one looks to be heading for the sanctuary of the fairway. Time for the second shot here at the seventh. Oh, that was a little loose, wasn't it? 
And this effort by Justin Thomas. Yeah, he just made bogey on that last one. Going with the pitching wedge here. Sitting at two over par. Trying to break into the top 20. Not your best effort. Still a mid-range putt coming up. Well, that'll maintain the momentum. Nice par putt. Now seven shots behind after that. We've reached the eighth hole. The tee is yours. Just can't do it, man. That's a bit out of shape. Setting up here, um, looking at an elevated green. Wherever, wherever the wind is going, I'll aim it the way it should take, and I just hit it the opposite. I don't know. Looks to have chosen the seven iron. Yeah, this is lovely. Not a bad shot, that. Still a chance. Slim chance here for birdie, but you never Short. know. Oh, what a shame. That would have been a nice one to hold. Sometimes when you try and get it up the hill, you just forget to hit it sometimes, and it seems so in this case. Two great shots are required here because this hole is a long par four. Only the big hitters are going to be able to carry that fairway bunker down the left-hand side. Most players are going to try and avoid it and even miss it, the fairway, out to the right-hand side, which is not a bad miss. From there, the second shot is directly uphill. Deep, deep bunkers on the front right part of this. That is not the place to miss it. Anything that a little bit long will leave you a downhill putt, but that's the safe play. Oh, good look at a birdie here. Oh, that's frustrating. And that's all she wrote. Now let's switch our focus to Justin Thomas. Oh, he's out in front here in this rivalry. But can he stay that way? And the entire field looks up at that familiar sight and sees the name of Tiger Woods on top. Welcome to this hole. That's a par four. No, not at all. And what a hole it is. It's changed a lot over the years. This green is actually reminds me of something you would see at Pinehurst. There is no flat spots on it. It either is downhill or uphill. That's it. Players most likely will take driver or fairway wood and try and leave themselves just on the front left portion of this green. That's the most ideal spot they can hit it, no matter where they put the flag stick. However, hitting it there is nearly impossible. A keen short game is absolute necessity to make birdie here. Trailing by seven after that hole. I'm pretty sure this player will be buoyed by that birdie back at the last. Let's see if they can deliver another one. It's just a long straightaway par five, almost a runway, if you like. Both sides of this fairway flanked by huge eucalyptus trees, which frames this tee shot brilliantly. You find the fairway, second shot, once again, straightforward. You must avoid that bunker front right at all costs. That is deep and nasty. You're not going to enjoy being in there. Now let's head over and see what JT's been doing. He's currently ahead in this rivalry. Let's see what happens. Setting up miles from the hole. Short game has been absolutely fantastic today. Playing their fourth shot. Sure. Oh, that's all class. Oh, gotta love it. Chip it in for birdie. Nothing better. And let's have another look at that one. Beautifully judged. Great tempo on this chip.
Tiger Woods back in his familiar spot, currently leading the field here. Teeing off here on the 12th hole. This is where the golf course gets extremely difficult, Luke. This tee shot moves from left to right, but massive overhanging eucalyptus trees down the right-hand side prevents you from hitting a high draw over them. Once you're in the fairway, though, your second shot is to a green that's really not as big as it should be for such a long hole. And there's a famous tree just short and left of this green, Bogey's tree. Not because of the score, because Humphrey Bogart used to sit there and just watch everybody butcher this hole. Not the result they were after there. Can't fault him there. This rough is nasty. No fault in missing the green. Oh, a little sigh of relief. Happy to be putting again. This putt is about eight feet. This is important. Big par putt here. Whatever. This is looking solid. What they wanted. Yeah, it's a good putt to hold for a bogey. Trailing by eight strokes now after that hole. Always the toughest hole in the game. A long par four. It's really cool. This tee shot is framed by large eucalyptus trees, both right and left, requires a draw. Nothing else to do. You have to move this golf ball from right to left off this tee. If you do it correctly, well, that golf ball could chase down there miles down this fairway. You find the fairway down there, you're going to love the second shot. The difficulty gets when the pin is all the way back left in this little peninsula. You miss it a little bit left there, you're going to find the barranca, and you're probably going to find a bogey or worse. Getting ready to play their third. That's a wonderfully played chip shot there. Got to say, his short game is phenomenal. And this effort by Justin Thomas. Oh, he's out in front here in this rivalry. But can he stay that way? Yeah, that mighty shot was certainly worth a move up the leaderboard. Let's see what it's done. And a very familiar sight. Tiger Woods on top of the leaderboard. Teeing off now on the 14th hole. Luke, there's a very simple hole in my mind, but for the mere mortals who are playing this game, it can be difficult because this green is not deep, but it, it's certainly wide, and it does tilt from right to left at a pretty good clip. Historically, it's not the easiest par three on this golf course, but for me, eh, I think different. Trailing by six shots after that hole. Next up is a par four, always a stern test. It's a great par four, and yet there's some players that have seen it a little bit differently lately. I always saw it as a dog leg from left to right, just avoid that fairway bunker down the right-hand side. And this is an interesting green. It's got a high spot on the left, and it's got a low middle section and a high section on the right-hand side, and you never have a flat putt. It is always breaking one direction or another, and it's either straight uphill or straight downhill. This is the most difficult green on the golf course by a long margin. If you see it differently, you can hit it down the right, down 17 fairway, but I fail to see how that's any kind of advantage. A par putt awaits. Hey, that's a chance. Oh, wonderful effort. Confirms the par. Well, it's an advantage because it now takes some of the to Justin Thomas. hazards out of play instead of trees and his rival. He's too ahead. on the right side. Like if the Trying wind to was going to the left the like it was putt. today, you don't need to hit into the trees. And after that hole, this is how you can just aim to the right, right and hope it doesn't bring it into that fairway bunker advantage. on the other hole. So... Par threes always offer up that hope of a hole in one. It's an island green, if you can believe that. It's surrounded by bunkers. I think this is another one of the all time great designs. It's only about 160 yards, Luke, but the whole green is surrounded by bunkers. Everything feeds towards the center and the front of this green once it gets on there. I just think this is a magnificent design. If you hit it in any one of those bunkers, making a par will be nearly impossible. And that par ensures he'll stay right there at even par. We have a par five at this one. At all costs, do not hit it in that fairway bunker down the right-hand side, anywhere to the left, even in the rough left. 
is just fine. From there, your next shot should be laid up out to the right-hand side. Third shot straight back up the hill with some kind of wedge. It can be an easy birdie if you get the distance on your third shot spot on. If you get it wrong, however, you could have some issues. Maybe going for the green, are we? And here we are with the third shot. Henny, you've had the chance to have a look over this one? This one's 13 feet from the cup. Well, that's a mistake. Tough to leave that short. I hate to use the word choke, Luke, but that's exactly what happened there. A flat out choke. Not a bad line, this one. This shot from about 190 yards out. Wind's blowing from left to right. I'm gonna try and hold it against the wind. That's a good shot by him. He'll be delighted. Chance to get one under the card with this putt. This one's tracking. Gets that one to go down, and that'll end the day's work. A 69. Yay. So that wasn't a bad round of golf there, Rich, but oh. hopefully our player can find a spark tomorrow and move Man. up that leaderboard. Why Once am again, I doing so awful today, all of a sudden? But unfortunately, everybody ahead of them played even better, so they're going to have to find something in their game in order to move up that leaderboard. On behalf of myself, Rich Beam, and all the hard-working folks at 2K Sports, thanks for tuning in, and see you next time. Why is this course rated only a three and a half? It's a good course, it's just, I mean, it's a hard course, like I said in the beginning. It's a tough one. I thought it was because it was really long, but it's because of the greens. It's not actually that long of a course. I don't know why I thought Riviera was so long. 2K Sports, in association with the PGA Tour, proudly presents the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. We're at the Genesis Invitational. Today's coverage is just about to begin. <laughs> Pleased you could join us for this third round action. I'm Luke Elvey with my mate Rich Beam in the booth. And Beamer, this player really hasn't been getting it going in this tournament, finds himself trailing the lead. What are your expectations of them today? Well, certainly they're stuck in second gear out there, aren't they? They just make a birdie or two and then they give it back with a bogey. So they need to quit making mistakes. They need to go ahead and start putting this thing in third and fourth gear and start cruising down the highway a little bit quicker because right now they're trailing and they can't afford to give any more uh, back. Can't wait to get into the action. Very excited to see how this player fares today. Well, you love this player. Why wouldn't you wait to see how this player plays? You just, you have a poster of this player at home, don't you? A two. Ah, okay. Mm. You see why I put it so far back Didn't quite in the judge first the part. speed on that one. What's in front of them, Henny? Yeah, they've left it in the perfect spot here, just below the hole. They can be aggressive up the hill. Five feet coming up to the cup. Some yeah. damage limitation. That this made one sense. For a bogey. And all of them are chasing Tiger once again as we move to the next. Start to and play okay, and the then you get fucked by drive on this hole. shit that doesn't make any I've goddamn sense. I've never seen a golf course where you're so happy to start off birdie bogey. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. The second hole, pretty straight away off the tee shot. The second shot moves a little bit from left to right back up the hill. There is some space on the right-hand side to miss your second shot up by the green, but there's no guarantees that it'll kick hard enough right to left to get back on the green. It's a sensational second hole. Scorecard filled with threes never hurts. Good putt to make this. Down she goes. Let's head to the next. So no movement there. The player remains at even par. Teeing off here at the third hole. Nicely done. Keep your fingers crossed for a bounce to the right. What an opportunity to make a birdie. 
Now, Come on, happens. it didn't break at all. Looks like a pretty straightforward five footer to me. Well, that's a momentum. Come on, man. Well done. <laughs> it broke the entire way there, then you hit it. Nah, never mind. It's just not gonna break. So no movement there. All right. He stays it even with the card. And now striding onto the tee of this par three hole. This is a spectacular par three. Ideally, players want to hit a tee shot that moves significantly from right to left. What if you and just, you know, with the pull contour it left. of the green? If they can do that, that they've got an opportunity to hit it really close. If they challenge the pin off the tee shot, well, it could come up short in that bunker, and that is a massive no-no. Oh, that's a clutch par. It was nice to see that go in because it has been pretty darn ugly up to this point. Mm -hmm. Second shot here on the third. So after that hole, this is the current standings on the course. So no movement on the leaderboard there, remaining at even overall. Moving up the leaderboard, I like it. Yeah, knew we weren't going to do on. it twice. Be better than that. Henny, do you have a better look at this lie? Looks like they have a bad lie here in the second cut. This is not sitting nicely. I'd rather go off the green. Oh yeah, that's awesome. I didn't think they'd be able to hit that from that lie. A birdie putt awaits. This putt to tie Justin Thomas. Wow, never mind. Yeah, that's lovely weight. Getting it right up by the hole. Excellent job. Our current leader is up by three shots. Time to tee off at the sixth. What an incredible design this is. And it really just takes this green and it makes it into a section of four. The back right, the front right, front left, and back left, they all have their unique features to it. And that all is due to the simple fact that that bunker, which is tiny, <laughs> minuscule, almost not even there, it basically shapes that green into the four quadrants. It is just an amazing design. Could roll into the rough on this one. I love how the greens, you'll roll it up a tiny hill and it'll come back down somehow. Yet they don't break at all. This next one from the beach. find it fascinating like look at this oh, uh, I was going to say it's about shot. to come back down a hill just take a look at this one Rich do you think it's makeable? Luke I, I really don't think this is going to happen but you know what I've been wrong before yeah because it, it broke again. a lot this putt's about four feet from the hole literally right at the hole and let's have a look at Tony Finau from earlier this was his third and after that effort, this is how the I mean, they're, they aren't worth watching because and it says minus it nine. Right he's on the 18th hole, so he's probably like plus nine. It says third shot for a chip in. It's a probably his fourth four. or his fifth for a bogey or something. Well, I like the look of the line here. They should find the fairway. Every single thing is Play wrong when one, they show the highlights. About 130 yards out. Well, that's comfortably on the dance floor. Well played. This putt coming up is for birdie. Oh, what a stroke. And down it goes. And with it, he moves to one under par. Finally, after the BS of that first green, and after that good we play, finally get that shot back. The leaderboard. Always positive coming off a of birdie. Let's see what happens here. Only the big hitters are going to be able to carry that fairway bunker down the left-hand side. Most players are going to try and avoid it and even miss it, the fairway, out to the right-hand side, which is not a bad miss. From there, the second shot is directly uphill. Deep, deep bunkers on the front right part of this. That is not the place to miss it. Anything that's a little bit long will leave you a downhill putt, but that's the safe play. really didn't Let's think that was going to go hole. past the hole. Yeah, about 125 yards to the pin. It's got this thing dialed in here, looking good. Getting ready to play their third. Well, 
wonderful punt. <laughs> he can claim it. Back-to-back -back birdies. Back-to-back -back birdies never hurt, Rich. Gotta like it. He's feeling it. Why not take another look at that effort? <laughs> that's not... Okay, I was going to say, let's not even look at the ball. He finds himself in a share of 13th. And they'd be feeling buoyed with confidence after that birdie. Here's a good chance to maintain the momentum. No, not at all. And what a hole it is. It's changed ah. a lot over the years. This green is actually reminds me of something you would see at Pinehurst. There is no flat spots on it. It either is downhill or uphill. That's it. Players most likely will take driver or fairway wood and try and leave themselves just on the front left portion of this green. That's the most ideal spot they can hit it no matter where they put the flag stick. However, hitting it there is nearly impossible. A keen short game is absolute necessity to make birdie here. Look who's stalking us all on top of the leaderboard. It's Tiger Woods. Lovely momentum for this player after that birdie at the last hole. Keep it rolling. It's just a long straightaway par five, almost a runway, if you like. Both sides of this fairway flanked by huge eucalyptus trees, which frames this ah. tee shot brilliantly. You find the fairway, it's second right, shot, though. once again, straightforward. You must avoid that bunker front right at all costs. That is deep and nasty. You're not going to enjoy being in there. Really? Really? Well, this will be a big birdie here. Good putt to make. Oh, so close. And that puddle drop. Well done. He's currently in a share of 11th place. Always like to see your name moving up the leaderboard. Never a bad thing. This looks to be heading for the cut stuff. And Henny, what are you seeing down there? Yeah, he's about 155 from this whole location. Had a fantastic Why is our pitching wedge and our gap wedge only the three yard difference? What? Yeah, it was going to be a yeah, well played. tough one anyway with way. our wedges. I tell you what, I've seen it happen before, Weird. so there's a chance. This putt is to move inside the all-important top ten. Oh, so close, really? but an easy par. Really? He's currently tied for 12. You've arrived at a par four. Step up to the tee and own it. It's really cool. This tee shot is framed by large eucalyptus trees, both right and left, requires a draw. Nothing else to do. You have to move this golf ball from right to left off this tee. If you do it correctly, well, that golf ball could chase down there miles down this fairway. If you find the fairway down there, you're going to love the second shot. The difficulty gets when the pin is all the way back left in this little peninsula. You miss it a little bit left there, you're going to find the barranca, and you're probably going to find a bogey or worse. Yeah. Shame it didn't drop. I was afraid to hit it because if it goes more than a foot past the hole, I know it's going off the green. Enjoys a five shot advantage. All right, getting into our final stretch. Time to tee off here at the 14th. Hit a seven iron, uh, a high little draw seven iron, and two hopping right in the hole, Luke. That's what I suggest. That makes it easy. Well, I didn't hit a draw, but that's tiny. I did hit a seven iron. That what was are we high. At for this putt, Henny. Yeah, he's staring down about 12 feet. This is their look at birdie. You can mark it down. That's birdie number four today. And that will take him to four under. He's currently tied for eighth. Teeing off here at the 15th hole. It's a great par four, and yet there's some players that have seen it a little bit differently lately. I always saw it as a dog leg from left to right. Just avoid that fairway bunker down the right-hand side. Mm. And this is an interesting green. It's got a high spot on the left, and it's got a low middle section and a high section on the right-hand side, and you never have a flat putt. It is always breaking one direction yeah, or another. I'll take it from and there. And it's either straight uphill or straight downhill. This is the most Should've difficult went for the green other fairway, on the I guess. golf course by a long margin. 
If you see it differently, you can hit it down the right, down 17 fairway, but I fail to see how that's any kind of advantage. <laughs> Come on, like man. this one. It's for par. Do so well, Sounds and then all of a sudden. Just three feet to go to the hole. Don't miss this. They can be costly. And as we head to the next, it's Tiger on top of the leaderboard. Yeah, I can understand you'd be disappointed by the bogey, but here's an opportunity to bounce back. It's an island green, if you can believe that. It's surrounded by bunkers. What the hell? I think Are we going for the right green? One of the all-time great designs. It's only about 160 yards, Luke, but the whole green <laughs> is surrounded by bunkers. Uh, Everything feeds towards the center and the front of this green once it gets on there. I just think this is a magnificent design. If you hit it in any one of those bunkers, making a par will be nearly impossible. I don't think you're talking about the right one, but... It was on a good line. Yep. I knew that was going to happen if we didn't make it. Well, Rich, you think they can make this one? Look, I got to say, I'm really not liking their chances here, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. And now Intrepid on course reporter, John standing by. Hey, guys, we are checking in with Tiger Woods as he gets set for his next shot here on the 10th. Oh, my. And how did that great shot impact the score? Let's have a look at the leaderboard. Our leader is out in front by a whopping five strokes. Yeah. They still this hole is ro royally five. screw up on the leaderboard that way. At all costs, do not hit it in that fairway bunker down the right-hand side, anywhere to the left. I Even think the last, the like, five tournaments, the leader's been ahead fine. by, like, five there, or six every time. Your next shot should be laid up out to the right-hand side. Third shot, straight back up the hill with some kind of wedge. <laughs> I it tried. I tried to lay it up instead of trying to go for it. You get the distance on your third shot spot on. If you get it wrong, however, you could have some issues. I don't know if they meant to do that. Not a huge surprise missing the green here. That lie was awful. See ya. It was impossible to keep it on. This is their fifth shot. Oh, wonderfully played chip shot. Just eyeballing that one, trying to make it. I love it how they make the green so shit. If they're this bad, think about you how it, they're going to play the um, at East Lake. Up the hill, fairway tilts significantly from left to right. It's going to be impossible. Right is a massive no-no. You'll be blocked out by a bunch of eucalyptus trees that you cannot hit it through. Second shot is to a green that actually tilts Whatever. away from the players, not towards them, even though the second shot is uphill. Green is historically one of the firmest on the golf course, and getting it close is nearly impossible. It is a heck of a Bye. finishing hole. Sitting at two under par, trying to crack into the top ten. Putting for bogey. Look at that, three Round in a row. Box. Good luck. Hey, that's time. nice. Okay, Rich, just around the play now. What an exciting finish we've got coming up. Yeah, so far, 54 good holes of action. Hopefully, 18 more to come tomorrow. On behalf of Rich Beam, Henny Koyak, John McCarthy, I'm Luke Elvey saying so long from 2K Sports. Man, it's just super, super random when I actually end up playing decent. I mean, even just five under a round. Like, I'm averaging only one or two under. 2K Sports and the PGA That's Tour awful. are delighted to bring you the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Here we are at the Genesis Invitational, one of the top events each Course. year on the schedule. Today's coverage is about to start. Please, you could join us for this final round action. I'm Luke Elvey, here alongside Rich Beam. And Rich, this next golfer starts their round. What do you think about their chances? Right now, he has not got the victory secured, but a good final round here could see him what? into the winner's circle. Let's get down to the action. This would be a great up and down. Well, you like the look of those hands. You better believe it is great stuff to watch. He finds himself in a share of 15th position. 
now on the tee of a long par four. I've never seen a golf course where you're so happy to start off birdie bogey. It's the strangest thing I've ever seen. The second hole, pretty straight away off the tee shot. The second shot moves a little bit from left to right back up the hill. There is some space on the right-hand side to miss your second shot up by the green, but there's no guarantees that it'll kick hard enough right to left to get back on the green. It's a sensational second hole. Well, if we didn't pull it and hit it fast, well, it would have been all right. Well, this is one of those lies that dictates a shot, but it doesn't seem like it's a tough one. Wow. Yeah, that's some golf, particularly from that terrain. It's currently tied for 15th. Next up is this par four hole. Time for the second shot into the third. How is that slow? That's a Doesn't good matter, shot I guess there. We, you can really get that what one close. What are we looking at for this part, Henny? Careful not to leave this one short. I did. It's back uphill and nothing worse than leaving an uphill putt short. And stepping up the standings after that effort. <laughs> Opting for the six iron. That one's headed right and staying right. It's fair to say that that approach didn't hit the mark. Another missed green in regulation. They got to do better. Nice soft hands around the green. What a skill to have. Judging it beautifully. Is it Based on the shot I hit, I don't think you're holding that green, buddy. Time to take a look at what this par four might be in order. The fairway does run out about 310 yards off the tee, and players not necessarily going to hit driver here. They have to be mindful that the fairway pitches significantly from right to left on their tee shot. From there, they're hitting their second shots downhill again to a green that chases away from them front to back. Again, a simple-looking second shot, but a difficult one to get close. A seven-footer right here. And that's for birdie. Well hold. And with it, he'll move to a couple under par. He's sharing 13th place. Gotta like it. Moving up the leaderboard. Never a bad thing. We find ourselves on a par three here. What an incredible design this is. And it really just takes this green and it makes it into a section of four. The back right, the front right, front left, and back left, they all have their unique features to it, and that all is due to the simple fact that that bunker, which is tiny, minuscule, almost not even there, it basically shapes that green into the four quadrants. It is just an amazing design. Well, this would be a good one to make. It's for par. Well done. And he dances his way to the top ten after that. Chipped it on the sure. green. I'm a rebel. Well, it's time to head back down to the fairways. John, what's up, mate? Well, I'm on the eighth. This is Justin Thomas's next shot. Let's take a look at the leaderboard as it stands. And staying right where they were in today's rankings after that. Time to see what this par four has in store. The fairway bunker down the left-hand side comes in quicker than you can imagine and so players want to try and hit it out towards the far right part of it but again you push it a little bit and now the barranca comes into play if you find the fairway happy days this green is probably one of the most severe tilted from back to front players need to make sure their second shots land past this hole in order for it to come back down towards the hole you will have a downhill putt but it's better than coming up short so this one's a little bit uphill. Okay, steady now. Seven feet to the cup. He's got this for his part. Yeah, good putt. Well hold. Our man on the ground, John, he's down there. What's the news? 
Hey guys, we are checking in with John Rahm as he gets set for his next shot here on the second. 21 feet to the cup from here. Well, that's going to have some impact on the scoreboard. Let's take a look. He's in a tie for 14th place. Here we find ourselves on the tee of a par four. Yeah, this is a quality looking shot, this one. That should find the Don't short think, stuff. No, I hit the, I hit the fairway the one time. This will take a big hack to get out here. That's a tad wayward. Not quite finding the surface. A bit short with that effort. Wow. I hit it perfect. Time now for the fourth shot. <laughs> it's a well played chip shot there. Yes. Very smooth. You're trying to tell me on that, chip. that I just simply wasn't able to hit a flop a from right there. Currently okay. One under for the tournament. Moving down the leaderboard, Luke, never a good thing. And now teeing off on this par four hole. Only the big hitters are going to be able to carry that fairway bunker down the left hand side. Most players are going to try and avoid it and even miss it the fairway out to the right hand side, which is not a bad miss. From there, the second shot is directly uphill. Deep, deep bunkers on the front right part of this. That is not the place to miss it. Anything that's a little bit long will leave you a downhill putt, but that's the safe play. And here we are with the third shot. Oh, a lovely opportunity to save par here. This is on a great line. Gee, that had a chance, didn't it? And down it goes for consecutive bogeys. Two bogeys in a row, never a good sign. Have to see if they can't rebound from that. Kind of what we're known for. John, you're down there. What's happening? Down on the 11th hole. This is Justin Thomas's next shot. Those are the kind of putts the best in the world make with monotonous regularity. And unfortunately dropping back to level with the card. And now we find ourselves with a par four here. No, not at all. And what a hole it is. It's changed a lot over the years. This green is actually reminds me of something you would see at Pinehurst. There is no flat Look spots that, on it. It shit. either is downhill or uphill. That's it. Players most likely will take driver or fairway wood and try and leave themselves just on the front left portion of the screen. That's the most ideal spot they can hit it, no matter where they put the flag stick. However, hitting it there is nearly impossible. A keen short game is absolute necessity to make birdie here. And here we are with their four. Playing their fifth shot. Great touch. Really nicely played. Oh, Dr. Chapinski strikes again. Johnny Mack, what's the news? Love it when it wasn't even my oh, fault that I doubled at home. Shot. Don't well, put in grandstands if you don't properly the field looks up at that use the drop the shots. Tiger Woods on top. And they'll have to compose themselves now with this tee shot after a double bogey at the last. It's just a long straightaway par five, almost a runway, if you like. Both sides I do of the love how game companies and devs are so open with just being like shot brilliantly. people asking, did you fix this? And then them just going, forward, we didn't even touch it. Avoid that bunker front right at all costs. That is deep and nasty. You're not going to enjoy being in there. Yep. In fact, admitting that they know it's bad and just and this putt is from also Big going, yeah, we didn't card. even touch that. He's got this to halve Justin Thomas. Well, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Pretty straightforward four-footer coming up here. Our current leader is enjoying a one-shot lead. Next up is this two-shot hole. 
this is where the golf course gets extremely difficult, Luke. This tee shot moves from left to right, but massive overhanging eucalyptus trees down the right-hand side prevents you from hitting a high draw over them. Once you're in the fairway, though, your second shot is to a green that's really not as big as it should be for such a long hole. And there's a famous tree just short and left of this green, Bogey's tree. Not because of the score, because Humphrey Bogart used to sit there and just watch everybody butcher this hole. Par putt coming up here. Their short game has been very impressive. They've been really sharp today. That's a good putt for par. You'll take it. I don't know. The, I'll be honest, the bad play comes from Tiger Woods back in his familiar spot, hitting shots place in this one. that should be nowhere near what it was. Well, and then I just get like really pissed reach. off. It's really cool. And it doesn't this go down from there. This shot is framed by large eucalyptus trees, both right and left, requires a draw. Nothing else to do. You have to move this golf ball from right to left off this tee. If you do it correctly, well, that golf ball could chase down there miles down this fairway. If you find the fairway down there, you're going to love the second shot. The difficulty gets when the pin is all the way back left in this little peninsula. You miss it a little bit left there, you're going to find the barranca, and you're probably going to find a bogey or worse. What's in front of them, Henny, with this putt? Yeah, he's been prowling around this one. It's 11 foot out. Now this one, this is important. This for par. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. Who gives a shit? It's time to tee off here at the 14th hole. Luke, it's a very simple hole in my mind, but for the mere mortals who are playing this game, it can be difficult because this green is not deep, but it, it's certainly wide, and it does tilt from right to left at a pretty good clip. Historically, it's not the easiest par three on this golf course, but for me, eh, I think different. Always well, nice to have a birdie putt. That's disappointing. Seven feet to the cup. Nicely hold, and for par. And a very familiar sight, Tiger Woods on top of the leaderboard. We've arrived at a par four hole. It's a great par four, and yet there's some players that have seen it a little bit differently lately. I always saw it as a dog leg from left to right, just avoid that fairway bunker down the right-hand side. And this is an interesting green. It's got a high spot on the left, and it's got a low middle section and a high section on the right-hand side, and you never have a flat putt. It is always breaking one direction or another, and it's either straight uphill or straight downhill. This is the most difficult green on the golf course by a long margin. If you see it differently, you can hit it down the right, down 17 fairway, but I fail to see how that's any kind of advantage. Ooh, we're at the par three here. I love these holes. It's an island green if you can believe that. It's surrounded by bunkers. I think this is another one of the all-time great designs. It's only about 160 yards, Luke, but the whole green is surrounded by bunkers. Everything feeds towards the center and the front of this green once it gets on there. I just think this is a magnificent design. If you hit it in any one of those bunkers, making a par will be nearly impossible sitting at one over for the event. Well, here we go, Rich. We're at the penultimate hole, the 17th. At all costs, do not hit it in that fairway bunker down the right-hand side. Anywhere to the left, even in the rough left, is just fine. From there, your next shot should be laid up out to the right-hand side. Third shot straight back up the hill with some kind of wedge. It can be an easy birdie if you get the distance on your third shot spot on. If you get it wrong, however, you could have some issues. This would be a great up and down. Oh, that had eyes for it. Lovely shot. That'll help make a big move. Oh, I'd like to have one more look at that shot. Yeah, they were looking at an up and down, but just down. Move him to even power for the tournament. 
and now striding to the final tee of this round. Tee shot up the hill, fairway tilts significantly from left to right, missing it out to the right is a massive no-no. You'll be blocked out by a bunch of eucalyptus trees that you cannot hit it through. Second shot is to a green that actually tilts away from the players, not towards them, even though the second shot is uphill. Green is historically one of the firmest on the golf course, and getting it close is nearly impossible. It is a heck of a finishing hole. And this putt for a final score of 72. And that will conclude his tournament to date. Not a bad week, Rich, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it was a good week all around. Some loyalty. some bright moments in this player's game, but overall, it awful. lacked a little bit. Work needs to be done. I mean, just well, awful. Well, on behalf of myself, Luke Elby, and Rich Beam, thanks for tuning in. Catch you tomorrow. Seventeen and eleven. We had three doubles. He had none. We both had ten bogeys. I guess the difference was I had sixteen birdies, even though we finished the same, and he only had eight. But because of my doubles, uh... we stay in second. Club fitting, club fitting, we got the Cobra Woods, we'll go ahead and equip. Um, really we got Justin Thomas's stuff? I guess if you just get one more point than them you just win. Okay. Not one of those stupid clubs. I guess our next rival will be Xander Shoffley. He's 23rd in the ranking. He's 28th. Turned pro in 2015. We get a hat, shoes, and money. But will we play any better at the Northern Shore Open? Who knows? Uh, we don't need... Cobra anymore, so the next time I get a good club sponsor, um, I'll switch that out. So we do have the woods, uh, the hybrids, so we need a club sponsor for the hybrids. Oh look, we got an orange one. We don't have uh, one for the head on the driver, and this gives us only good stuff. Power timing, swing path, transition, and lie range. This is a grip. There's a head right there. So this is the one we have right now. Much better transition, shaping, same timing, worse swing path, fly range, and power. Let's go ahead and do it. It's the wood. Do we still not have a grip for the wood? Oh, here we go.
Got this title is at. Got a Nike glove. Eh, I don't really like to look at that one. Got these Nikes. And these Pumas. What are the Pumas? Alright guys, it's gonna end this one. Again, let's hope for a better round. Or a better tournament next time, but hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day and I'll see you. Bye.